What is the difference between a Marriott, a JW Marriott, a Courtyard, a Renaissance Inn, a Fairfield Inn, a Residence Inn, a W Hotel, a Sheraton, a Westin? Marriott Hotels has 32 brands, 7,600 hotels, and frankly, it's become a little hard to keep them all straight and keep them all separate to know which ones you want to stay in. And so in this video, the complete guide to Marriott Hotels, I'm going to break down these 32 brands, let you know what the differences are share with you some of my favorites and some of my least favorites as well. So uh, next time you're looking for a hotel to stay in, you'll know which Marriott chain brands are the best. Uh, and if you're watching the archive, by the way, um, I'll put some timestamps in time stamps in here to these 32 different brands so you can skip to one if you're looking for it. If you're watching the live stream, though, I'm looking forward to hearing what you think, what your favorite brands are, which ones you like, and which ones you dislike. And so let's go to brand number Number one of Marriott Hotels, Marriott, the hotel of the brand name. This brand was established in 1957. They have 595 Marriott locations with 129 currently in the pipeline, which means some stage of being built. Now, Marriott Hotels, the original brand, caters to upscale business travelers. Typically, they're located in city centers in downtowns. They have business um, lounges. They're near airports. They're typically known for having large guest rooms, big public spaces, lobbies that you can sit in with bars and restaurants, uh, typically with meeting facilities, gyms, fitness centers, swimming pools, room service. Marriott hotels compare it most directly to Hilton and Hyatt hotels. Uh, but Marriott, the, the base brand, can really range in quality from some being super great to some being from 1957 and needing a little bit of an overhaul. They've been around for so long, some of them are tired. Now, the flagship under the Marriott brand have Marriott Marquis in their distinction. So in San Diego, there's a Marriott Marquis um, Bay side that's right next to the convention center. It's really nice. There's a Marriott Marquis in Washington, D.C. That one's really nice. Too. So if you see that marquee, that's going to be one of the best ones. And so one of the ones I stay in quite a bit is the Marriott Waikiki Beach Hotel. This one's just right across from the sand in Waikiki. Um, I stay here because I like the hotel. I actually find the value to be pretty good there. This is what the room looks like. It is a, a standard Marriott room. I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see it, but you know, there's nothing like super fancy or even super branded about Hawaii that is a view of Diamond Head out the window, but with Marriott a little bit, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a big room. You're going to get lots of space. It's going to be clean. It's going to be comfortable. Um, <clears throat> it's not going to be boutique, but it's going to be everything you need in a hotel. Now, my uh, favorite out of the Marriott chain is the Marriott Park Lane in London uh, next to Hyde Park Speaker's Corner, the place where people stand up on boxes and talk about werewolves and wolverines. Uh, this one, this is what the room looks like in that hotel. And this is where I say Marriott's can range. This one clearly does not look like a standard Marriott room. This one actually looks fairly British. It's got like a leather wallboard there, neat lamps. Uh, if you're a uh, kind of high-end elite member, you get free full English breakfast in the restaurant. I This is what I was getting to eat every day, which was truly amazing. Uh, and uh, okay, so now the next brand, brand number two, Sheraton Hotels. Sheraton. What's the difference between a Sheraton and a Marriott Hotel? I am glad you asked. Not much is the difference between a Marriott and a Sheraton Hotel. Marriott merged with Sheraton a number of years back. In case you missed it, that year was 2016 that Marriott merged with Sheraton. Um, and uh, now Sheraton as a brand actually was established before Marriott. Sheraton was established in 1937. Uh, there are 439 Sheratons, so a few less than Marriott's, and there's 105 in the pipeline. My favorite of the Sheraton brand is this one. This is the Sheraton in Waikiki. Chris goes to Hawaii and likes Hawaii a lot. It's the one right there at the arrow on it. It's like right there on the water. Um, 
This is what the room at the Sheraton in Waikiki looks like. A little bit nicer than the Marriott, just a couple blocks away, um, but still not, <clears throat> you know, does it look Hawaiian? Does it look like it should be there? You might say a little bit, but it's just much more that base Sheraton room, though a super great location. Um, much like Marriott's have the marquee designation, flagship Sheraton's have the grand designation. So if you see grand Sheraton, that's going to be one of the fancier Sheratons. The third brand we're going to talk about is JW Marriott. By the way, if you notice the pronunciation I'm using of the hotel chain, some people pronounce it Marriott. It is not pronounced Marriott. Actually, um, Marriott did a video recently saying it is pronounced just like Mary, like you're going to marry somebody and it or you're gonna carry it. It rhymes with carry it. So maybe you learned something you didn't know about how to pronounce this hotel chain. Uh, but JW Marriott is my favorite of all of the brands under the Marriott umbrella. There's 107 locations of JW Marriott. There's 47 in the pipeline. It's typically located in what they call gateway cities. So these are the big international cities and countries and in what they call distinctive resort locations. So not just any resort, but the really night nice ones. They cater to not just uh, upscale business travelers, but up upscale business travelers. These are the high-end business travelers, more modern, more upscale rooms, better lounges at a more expensive, but still reasonable cost compared to some of the other brands we're going to see coming up a little later. I like them because I feel they, I find they feel nice without being stuffy. Um, this is the lobby inside the JW Marriott Bangkok, which is one that I really enjoyed. We enjoyed our stay there, but you can just see it looks nice. It looks clean. It looks modern. It's big. It's got art in it. This is the room at the JW Marriott in Bangkok. Uh, it is clean, comfortable, generally a bit reserved on this modern side, not wild. Um, my favorite of the JW Marriott's is the one in Hong Kong, which is right here. Uh, it is located in the central district of Hong Kong. And this is the lobby of the JW Marriott Hong Kong. It is uh, this like kind of like three level open design with views of the bay. And they will have not one person standing at the door to open it for you, but two people standing at the door to open both the doors as you come in. Uh, and then this is what the room at the JW Marriott Hong Kong looks like with sweeping views of the harbor. What I also really like at the JW Marriott and what I like about a lot of the business focused merits is I like their executive or concierge lounges or M lounges. They kind of go by different names and different brands. But once you reach a certain level of elite status with uh, Marriott Bonvoy, then you get access to these lounges when you stay there. And this is the one in Hong Kong, which just has super amazing food for breakfast and evening hors d'oeuvres. You could really make a uh, dinner there. Uh, all right, next we're going to go to the Ritz Carlton brand as number four. But before we do that, I want to see um, what some of the comments in the chat are saying. Points Traveler on the live stream says, would you say that Marriott Osaka is one of your top merits? I did like that hotel. That one is pretty good. Uh, if you haven't seen my review of it, you can check that out. Uh, but I do like the Marriott in Osaka. JP says, where do you stay? Marriott Hilton's or Hyatt's the most. I stay in Marriott's the most of the chains. I've had over a thousand nights at Marriott hotels. So I'm a lifetime titanium member. Uh, next after Marriott is Hilton. Um, SoCal Seth points about Ritz Carlton that we're getting to uh, next that it's a little too stuffy. I agree. And Phil says the JW Marriott in Las Vegas is pretty nice. That one is pretty nice as well. Uh, I've got a review of that if you also want to check it out. Um, and uh, related to how we pronounce the hotel, Brandon says, I've been saying, I've been saying Marriott wrong the whole time. I've been saying Marriott the wrong, the all the whole time, which uh, most people do, frankly. So Brandon, don't consider yourself an outlier right there. By the way, if you wanted to play a drinking game along with this video, it would be every time I say Marriott, then you drink, though you'll probably be under the table by the time I'm done with this video. All right, so number four, Ritz-Carlton. There are 111 locations of Ritz-Carlton, 44 in the pipeline. The Ritz-Carlton is often a brand that is associated with having a amazing service. It has been rated the best hotel brand with the best service a number of years in a row by the people who rate those things. If you ask for help, their goal is to say yes if you ask for something. That's the training the employees receive. Ritz-Carlton's are expensive. 
I find them to be old luxury. I find them to be stuffy. They have very few elite benefits. It feels like Ritz-Carlton's want to nickel and dime you for everything. Personally, I am not a fan of the Ritz-Carlton brand, uh, but maybe because I'm not uber rich, and if I was and I had money for all those nickel and dimes, then I wouldn't mind as much. Uh, I just personally don't see the value to cost ratio in Ritz-Carlton's. Uh, their closest competitor, the Ritz-Carlton space, are uh, Four Seasons, Mandarin Oriental, the Peninsula Hotels, and Park Hyatt. Between Ritz-Carlton and Park Hyatt, I'll take a Park Hyatt any day. Now there's another brand in here of the 32 that we're going through, number five, which is the Ritz-Carlton Reserve, which is the even more expensive Ritz-Carlton's typically in resort locations. I feel like the more expensive these hotels get, the smaller their sign gets that you can't even see them. The sixth brand is St. Regis Hotels. This is a, another uh, upscale high-end chain. St. Regis came in from the Sheraton or Starwood merger. Um, and in addition to being similar to its Carlton, it is even more old school classic luxury. Though between the two, I prefer the classic luxury of St. Regis to the stuffy luxury of Ritz Carlton. Uh, and they really like to look at kind of elegant, timeless design. Uh, and they are also going for the very wealthy, but related to elegant, timeless design, this right here is the lobby of the St. Regis Hotel in Rome, which you can see actually looks quite grand and just kind of a neat place to hang out. St. Regis, unlike like Ritz-Carlton does recognize uh, Marriott Bonvoy elites and treats them uh, quite well. Now, uh, I have uh, noticed there are a few notes in the chat uh, of some people who say, hey, Ritz-Carlton isn't so bad, that uh, Kel says Ritz-Carlton has uh, free drinks and chips and guacamole, and uh, Phil says, I love the one on Maui. All right, well, thank you for those reports. Uh, and then Geoman says, I always think of Carlton from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air when I hear Ritz Carlton. And uh, Seth says, uh, St. Regis uh, gives you a butler as well. They are famous indeed for their butler service, your personal helper that can help you with things. Number seven is the W Hotels. W Hotels has 60 locations, 35 in the pipeline. W Hotels calls itself an iconic lifestyle luxury brand with a unique mix of cutting edge design, infusing its passions into fashion, fuel, and music into the W experience. I find these hotels have clubby-like bars with DJs that make you feel like it's a party wherever you are in the hotel. And if you're not partying, you're doing something wrong when you're there. Uh, w Hotels caters to the younger travelers, the people who like to party, the people who really like nightlife. Honestly, W Hotels are just a little bit too weird and too out there for me. Uh, this right here is the lobby of the W Hotel in Seattle. There are just way too many colors right there. Uh, and this is the room inside the W Hotel in Sentosa in Singapore. Now, uh, if you gave me a room at the W, I wouldn't turn it away because it wouldn't be a bad room or a bad experience. It's just... Uh, a little bit too much of a party. I like to relax and just a little bit more normalcy when uh, I get to my hotel. Points Traveler says, um, I think I'm a little too old to stay at W's anymore. That's how I feel too. Wu Tai says the W was crushing the price. Hopefully you mean maybe it's inexpensive because nobody's going to Seattle right now. Nicole says, I never knew about it. Uh, well, uh, now I'm glad to share a few chains that maybe you haven't heard of before. Martin wants to know when I'm going to do a complete guide to Travelodge videos. Martin, I will I will put that on the list. By the way, Kim asked what's pipeline. Pipeline means in development. So um, I'm sharing that with you so you can see how many they're building and how vibrant these chains are uh, within um, the Marriott umbrella. All right, chain number eight, the Courtyard Hotel. Courtyard by Marriott. This is a classic Marriott brand that people love to hate, hate to love, love to hate on. Um, there are people, there are a lot of courtyard hotels. Uh, there are 1,243 locations of Courtyard by Marriott hotels and 255 in the pipeline that are being built. Courtyard hotels are similar to Hilton Garden Inn or Holiday Inn. Marriott calls this a select service brand 
which really translates to no service. Uh, there's no room service. If you want somebody to help you with your luggage, good luck with that. Um, the staff's not gonna help you do much of anything other than check you in. Uh, it is built for the road warrior and the business traveler that is looking for just the basics and the essentials at a basic price without too much extra. This is what the standard courtyard room looks like. And if you compare these to the rooms I've shown you before, it is quite basic. Obviously, this is a nice one. This is a model room. The ones you get might look a little darker and a little bit more tired. Courtyards are famous for their in-window air conditioners that are super noisy and blow right on you on the bed all night, turn on and off. Um, it is one of my least favorite brands in the USA. Uh, given the option of staying at a courtyard in the USA or almost anywhere else, I will almost pick anywhere else. They're pretty much zero elite perks. Now that being said, I actually don't hate Courtyard entirely. Internationally, outside of the USA, they can be quite good. In particular, I really like the Marriott Courtyard Tokyo Station. That's a picture from inside the room. And if you look at this picture, it looks completely unlike that last room that you saw. It's quite a nice hotel. And for Marriott elites, they give uh, like a free hot breakfast, cook to order eggs, pancakes, things like that. Very different experience. I've enjoyed the courtyard in Prague. I've enjoyed the courtyard in Stockholm, Sweden. I just avoid them within the USA. Um, and uh, a, a chain that's very similar that merged in from Sheraton is Four Points by Sheraton. This was essentially Sheraton's answer to courtyard because they said Marriott was doing so good with courtyard, we need to make our own select service brand that gives you no service other than checking you in. Um, it's equally meh in the United States, but much better outside. Um, Eagle Eye points out that the ones uh, by the beach are nicer than the ones off the highway. Uh, I'll give you that, Eagle Eye. Courtyards, many courtyards are right next to the highway, and unfortunately, they're not very well soundproofed, and so if you end up with one of those rooms next to the highway, you're likely hearing trucks going by your room all night. Uh, Brandon says, Courtyard or Circus Circus, take your pick. I'll pick an international courtyard any day, a domestic one. I don't know. That's a tough choice. Is it? Do I get to pick the tower rooms of the Circus Circus, or do I have to be in the manor? Uh, Alex says, I got no problem. I'm perfectly fine with the basics. Uh, you, have, you have lower standards than I do, Alex, which there's nothing wrong with that, right? To, to each their own. Um, Brandon says, Courtyard should only have a 10 second mention, that's it. All right, well, let me move off four points then because it doesn't deserve any more than Courtyard does. Brand number nine, number nine, we did four points. Brand number 10 is the Spring Hill Suites. Spring Hill Suites has about half as many locations as Courtyard, a little less than half, but there's a lot of them. There are 510 Spring Hill Suites locations, 155 in the pipeline. Spring Hill Suites is another Marriott select service brand, but it's a select service brand that I actually like. Uh, it is the largest all suites brand in the upscale tier. So when you get a room here, uh, it's gonna have um, like a kitchen area, it's gonna have a bedroom area, it's gonna have a living room area. They're big, they're nice. Um, the rooms used to be fairly lame, but uh, they've recently partnered with West Elm, and so the rooms are actually quite good in the new ones. One of my favorites is the Spring Hill Suites in Zion, uh, right out of Zion, Zion National Park in Utah. Uh, and then you can see this is what the room looks like there at the Spring Hill Suites in uh, Zion, you can see me in the back taking that picture, but just a, it has kind of like a neat lodgy feel to it, which was, wasn't something I expected out of Spring Hill Suites, but they've really upped the game on the quality of the rooms. You can see this just looks so much better than a courtyard hotel. Um, and uh, Spring Hill Suites, unlike courtyards, always have a free breakfast, free breakfast buffet to everybody who stays there. And so that gets a plus one in my book over courtyard hotels. What is Chris drinking today? Today I am drinking Ginky. This is a Japanese uh, beverage that has calamansi in it. Calamansi in it. What is calamansi right there? Uh, it's something to be healthy. It is a small citrus fruit that packs a refreshingly sweet and sour punch. And that is definitely how I would describe this drink. It is sweet and sour at the same time. 
It's pretty good. It's made by Ito N that makes a lot of teas. Uh, and the interesting note on this, this drink is actually made in Hawaii. That's what it says on the can right there. Not a lot of drinks you can buy in the mainland the USA that come to you from Hawaii. <laughs> J-Ho says, oh no! Courtyard, uh, I'm staying at the one by Disneyland. Yeah, you know what? I think there's actually a Spring Hill Suites by Disneyland. There may be a Residence Inn and like a Hyatt Place or a Hyatt House. Uh, if those have similar prices, you might want those too. Uh, Points Travelers to Spring Hill are pretty consistent. I agree. Um, Samurai asks if hotels are offering free toothbrush kits. Most in the U.S. have never done that in the rooms, but they typically will at the front desk of the more upscale chains. JW Marriott, yes. Courtyards, no, never. Uh, Points Traveler says, I saw that the Spring Hill uh, by Zion is going 600 per night next month. That's crazy talk, but clearly because everybody's going to national parks right now and COVID, and so that's just a um, weird, weird artifact. Brandon asks if Courtyards give free coffee. No, they give free nothing. Brandon says, I love free continental breakfast. I love free breakfast. And then Kevin says, I'm usually with my family, so plus five for the free breakfast for me. I agree. I rate free breakfast, like, ranks really highly in my book because it can get really expensive. And Nicole says, free parking is beautiful. And Seth says, calamansi is from the Philippines. Delicious. All right. Brand number 11 is the Fairfield Inn and Suites. This one has nearly as many locations as the Courtyard, 1,189 locations, 378 in the pipeline. That means they're building 378 of these. It is Marriott's second largest brand to Courtyards, and it has the most in the pipeline, meaning there's the most of these planning to be built. Similar to Hampton Inn, similar to Holiday Inn Express, similar suite setup to Spring Hill Suites, just not quite as good, not quite as nice. Uh, and they have a free full breakfast like Spring Hill Suites, but it's not as good as the one at Spring Hill Suites. Given the choice, I will stay at Spring Hill Suites over Fairfield Inn uh, if they're the same price, though Fairfield Inns are usually a little less. Um, so I usually find these to be a good value. I don't give these the same hard pass that I give Courtyards. Um, Fairfield Inn is definitely one I consider, but I'll, I'll pick the Spring Hill Suites before. Number. Uh, oh, and so this is a room at, like, the Fairfield, um, where was this one? I, did, I clearly didn't write down where this one was. I think maybe this was one I stayed at in Arizona or something like that. Uh, if we look at this, you know, it's, it's, it's functional, um, but it doesn't have that same, uh, like, West Elm branding that the Spring Hill Suites has now. Okay, brand number 12. Protea Hotels. This is a new brand that's merged into the Marriott family. Protea has 70 hotels in Africa. If you watch Yellow Productions a lot, you'll know that Chris has never been to Africa. So I don't have a lot to say on Protea Hotels other than that might be your Marriott partner to look for in Africa. Next up, number 13 is AC Hotels. There's 198 locations of AC hotels with 118 in the pipeline. This is a new brand that was established about 10 years ago in 2011 with a modern design for modern business. They say it's a new way to hotel. AC hotels comes out of Spain, so the rooms have a very European feel, generally going for a low price point. They describe these hotels as having a purposeful design with no unwanted extras. <laughs> Do you know what no unwanted extras means? <laughs> means there's, there's not much in these hotels. Um, and uh, so this is a picture right here of one of these I've stayed in, which is the um, National Harbor AC Hotel, which is kind of like outside of Washington, D.C. I find the rooms to feel cheap. They feel like Ikea rooms. I find them to not be very functional, like the bathrooms have that European single glass wall. The closets are perhaps non-existent and just like a peg on the wall. Uh, I really, I'm really not a fan of the uh, AC IKEA hotels. Um, Points Traveler asks if they're considered fancy aloft. I don't know. I don't really consider them fancy, but I guess there's just a certain vibe that people may like in these. Um, 
But I will say, because there's a note in the comments about uh, like dirty hotels, isn't it? I've at least found all the AC hotels I've stayed in to be clean. So they've got, they've got that going for them. Uh, I heard a mention of a loft hotels, right? Or these fancy loft hotels. Let's talk about a loft hotels. This is number 14. There are 205 locations of a loft hotels, 107 in the pipeline. You will find these popping up across the United States along freeway interstates and exits kind of like wildfire, but particularly in rural-ish areas. They're not really popping up in the city centers, they're popping up in more rural areas. They are kind of like a mini W Hotel. Actually, it turns out a loft hotels are a subsidiary of the W brand under this umbrella. Uh, they're just not quite as luxurious. I would consider a loft hotels to be kind of like a fancy courtyard hotel, bringing some funkiness to the lobbies and the rooms, just not as funky or not as weird as the W Hotels. They don't, they don't seem like they're being uh, as desperate about the funkiness. Uh, and this is um, what the lobby of the Aloft Hotel looks like in Milwaukee. Um, so you can see it's kind of funky, but again, not, not too much, right? They use colors, but not too many colors. Another new brand in the Marriott umbrella is Moxie Hotels. Moxie has 100 locations with 110 in the pipeline. So you can see new brand, 100 existing, 110 being built. So they're, they're doubling down on Moxie Hotels. Moxie has cozy rooms with cozy prices. Social spaces that offer a fun experience for the right price. Moxie offers everything you want and nothing you don't which means that you're not gonna have any free toothbrushes at the Moxie Hotel, or you're not gonna have a footstool because you don't, you don't need that, and a footstool would take up more space and cost you more. Rooms are small at Moxie Hotels. They're typically 180 square feet, 17 meters. They cater to millennials, millennials who don't feel they need a desk because a desk is just wasted space. The nightstand is probably wasted space too. Um, and speaking of desks, the check-in at a Moxie Hotel um, in like a lobby area. It's not at a desk, it's at the bar. The check-in area of every Moxie Hotel is in fact a bar. Uh, you can post up Instagram pics on their video wall in the lobby so you can share with other people in the lobby what your experiences are. Their fitness center, they don't call it a fitness center, they call it the fun zone. Uh, and this is what the room at the Moxie in New York City Times Square looks like. Uh, I'm gonna make my video go away so that you can see the sink in it, right? And you can just see this is quite a tiny room. Uh, the rooms are small. Uh, even based on Japanese standards. Um, Wu Tai says, I've never heard of this hotel because it's pretty new, but they're aggressively uh, putting them out there. Uh, Careful Consumers says, maybe it's time to join the Marriott Frequent Stay Program. If you stay at Marriott Hotels, you definitely should. Uh, Victory asks, I've been to Tulum. No, not yet. Uh, Geoman says, it's my kind of hotel because they're small, they're cheap, they're inexpensive. Yeah, you know, some of the, the cheaper ones you're gonna be able to stay at in New York City, good location um, with not much space. Uh, Yoshi's joining in, thanks for joining in. It has been a while and Phil says it sounds a little bit like a capsule hotel. It, Eden says the Moxie New Orleans is very, very small very small. So take that into consideration. They are very, very, very small. This was likely taken with a wide angle lens and you can probably barely get around that bed in there. All right. So now let's talk about some of the brands in the Marriott umbrella that are designed for longer stays. Uh, in the longer stay brand, the classic one is Residence Inn. This is number 16 on our list. Residence Inn has 866 locations, 245 in the pipeline. Residence Inn really created and defined the extended stay lodging category. Um, Residence Inns can range from how they look. They can look like two-story condo developments to being in um, high rises. Uh, this particular residence in is the one in Washington DC in Foggy Bottom. This is what the living area looks like in the residence inn in Boston, which is a big uh, tower. And uh, residence inns all have a full kitchen. So you get a, a refrigerator, not a small one, big one, full-size refrigerator. You get a stovetop, you get a microwave, you get a dishwasher, you get dishes, you get a table that you can eat if you cook your food. Uh, and then you get a living area where you've got like a sofa and a television and a desk, and then another room that's also the uh, bedroom part of it. Um, 
Now, they also provide free breakfast. This is what the free breakfast at a residence inn looks like. Uh, you know, you get oatmeal, you get fruit, you get yogurt, all those sorts of things. And residence inns are one where they can kind of range in quality too because they've been around for so long, but I find the new residence inns to be quite nice. And while the breakfasts aren't amazing, um, of the chains we've talked about that have free breakfasts, Spring Hill Suites, Fairfield Inn, uh, now Residence Inn, I find Residence Inn to be the best of the um, kind of sweet hotel free breakfast categories. Uh, and then as a general rule, I find the ones in city center locations are generally nicer than the ones in um, like rural locations. Uh, comment that uh, residence in Cupertino is the best. All right, thanks for that tip. I've not stated that one, but I will uh, remember that. And uh, Careful Consumer says residence inns are great. If you have to stay for a while, try to pick a new one. I agree with that suggestion. Um, okay. Number 17, we're in the extended stay brands of Marriott right now, is Town Place Suites by Marriott. There are 471 town place suites locations, about half as many of these as there are residence inns, 200 being built. They put this in the value extended stay category, so they don't cost as much as residence inns, which means they aren't as nice. So basically you can consider town place suites to be a residence inn, but not as good. They have free breakfast, not as good. They have suites in their rooms, furniture is not as good. The walls are not as good. The walls I find to be paper thin in town place suites. Uh, if you want homey, I, I think you're better off with an Airbnb than you are with a town place suites. Cause I think if you want to stay for a long time, you actually probably want something that's a little bit nice cause you're staying there for a long time. I personally avoid town place suites. There was a question about whether I book Airbnb vacation rentals. I also avoid Airbnb vacation rentals, probably a subject for a different video than this one. Uh, but I do like hotels, particularly cause if there's something wrong in my room, I can easily get another one. It's not a big deal. Number 18 is Element Hotels. This is a new brand under the Marriott umbrella that comes in from Sheraton. Element is a subsidiary of Weston Hotels. There are 87 Element locations, 95 in the pipeline, so they're building more than exist right now. They have an open, modern design, healthy options. Element Hotels are focused on sustainability and being eco-friendly. Uh, you know, a lot of these hotel companies have profiled the younger generation saying that they prefer sustainability and eco-friendly over almost anything else. And so um, these companies have responded by building brands to focus on that because you know it's eco-friendly and sustainable because it's got green in the sign, right? It's green. It tells you, it tells you everything you need to know. Um, they've got things like bike sharing, you know, share bikes with people, do yoga in the hotel. Uh, they look like big beige and green bo boxes um, and kind of has a Bit of a clean uh, perspective to it. Uh, if we look in the rooms, they look nice, um, but they can look a little Ikea-ish. Uh, and these also, because they're extended stay, have full kitchens, but it does look a little bit like an Ikea kitchen, but it looks more like a bamboo Ikea kitchen because boy, that looks like a sustainable finish right there, doesn't it? So I mentioned this was a subsidiary of Weston. So let's go ahead and talk about Weston is number 19. Weston has 228 locations, 61 in the pipeline. Weston describes themselves as the preeminent wellness brand in hospitality. Weston is kind of like a Marriott, usually a little bit nicer than most of the Marriott. Marriott, I do it too, Marriott. Marriott's than most of the Marriott's, depending upon the property, could be not better, could be a little worser too. Is worser a word? I'm gonna use worser as a word. Usually they have really good lounges at Weston Hotels. This is the room inside the Weston in Las Vegas, which I've done a review of. I've heard they've remodeled and made it even nicer than it used to look, but it looks like a nice room. Um, this is probably my favorite of the Weston chain. This is the Weston Moana Surfrider Hotel in Waikiki. It's the um, five, six story building you see right here. And then it's also the big tower that you see on that side. And then the tower that you see on this side. Um, but what's really neat is this old, like hundred year old hotel it has the banyan tree in the middle, but the best part of it is definitely the lounge where if you're one of the Marriott elites or you've bought into the lounge access, then you can get your breakfast buffet with a view right here onto the sand. Super awesome location that I love. 
Okay. Um, and uh, Wu Tai says the Westin in Indianapolis is very nice. All right, thank you for that report on the Indianapolis one. Uh, Eagle Eye says, I love hotels too. I know people love Airbnb, but I'm so nervous to take that chance. I would also be worried about the camera. I think a camera is a big worry to have for sure. Jay says they also have a nice Westin in Kauai. <clears throat> I've not stayed there, but I've been by it, and yes, that one looks quite nice. Kathy says we walked through that hotel. It's a great hotel. We've not stayed there just to walk through because it's old and classic and grand. Mario says staying at the Westin Costa Mesa in May. Very cool. Side note about the Westin Costa Mesa because it's in Orange County, California. If you're having a Chinese wedding, they will do full Chinese banquets for Chinese weddings. Um, and we've had that there. You know, you don't go find many hotels in the U.S. that will provide full Chinese banquet food in their uh, ballrooms or conference facilities. But that one will. Uh, my dad, Electric Rick, says he says, I love the blue background in your studio. I'm glad because they're just, you know, a couple blue lights that shine up on the wall to make it nice and blue like that. Actually, I guess they could be any color, but I feel like blue contrasts the best with the yellow shirt. Brand number 20 are is the Marriott Executive Apartments. Marriott has 35 executive apartment locations. They're building 22 of them. These are the extended, extended stay um, these are for primarily corporate travelers, long-term lodging needs. They are studios, one, two, and three bedroom apartments located in the heart of business districts in typically gateway cities and emerging economies. What, what does that mean? That means there's uh, eight of these in China, two in India, four in Bangkok, four in Dubai, and a few more scattered around, but places uh, that companies often post people to work internationally. Brand number 21, extended, extended states, Marriott's answer to Airbnb, Marriott Homes and Villas. There are 2,000 uh, premium and luxury homes and 100 destinations that you can book as part of Marriott's Homes and Villas program. If you're looking for a timeshare, it is Marriott's 22nd brand. They have 91 locations of the Marriott Vacation Club that you can join in and get timeshares and book them yours or trade them in other places. And uh, you can also book them as hotels. So if you see a Marriott Vacation Club, know that you're getting into kind of a timeshare hotel. So the service offerings are likely going to be different than in a standard hotel because timeshares, they often don't clean your room every day. And some of those things, maybe you have to pay more if you want housekeeping on certain days. Uh, and then beware of the timeshare hard sell if you stay at Marriott Vacation Clubs. I know many, there's many people that love their Marriott Vacation Clubs and their vacation owners. I'm not dissing it at all. Uh, but they will, they will nag you and call you to come to their presentations if you're booking it as a hotel. 23 Renaissance Hotels. Renaissance has 174 locations, 26 in the pipeline. This is telling because they have a lot of locations, but they're building very few of them. I think Renaissance as a brand, I think they're phasing out this brand a little bit. I mean, they've definitely not corporately said they're phasing it out, but I think Renaissance gets maybe the least love in the Marriott brand corporately. Uh, they describe these as eclectic, yet tied together by a brand design strategy guest experience and signature services. Renaissance hotels are typically full service hotels like Marriott hotels are, um, and they typically have good uh, guest food and beverage and entertainment, but they're kind of all over the place. So really, um, you know, uh, you kind of really have to dive into these to see what you're getting at the particular location. Brand number 24, Late Meridian, 110 locations with 39 in the pipeline. Uh, Les Meridian hotels are kind of a Parisian style hotel uh, and they're going for a timeless, chic, mid-century, modern aesthetic taking inspiration from the glamorous days of air travel. The days when your flight attendants were not there primarily for your safety but actually there for service. Uh, Alex asks if I've ever stayed at the Newport Coast Villas which is a Marriott Vacation Club. I have not stayed there so I don't live that far from them. Uh, have you, Alex? I guess since you're saying it's a really nice resort, perhaps you have. Um, 
Meritocratic Mafia points out the Renaissance in Las Vegas is really nice. You get a view of the Wynn Golf Course. Uh, I like that Renaissance location. I've stayed at that one. It's also a great location uh, right by the monorail, as long as the monorail is still there near the convention center. They have a great lounge too, but Points Traveler agrees with me that uh, they are extremely inconsistent. And Tracy points out that the Grand Chateau Vacation Club in Vegas is great. It is one of my favorite hotels, one of my recommended kind of um, mid-price hotel to stay at in Las Vegas. The Merritt's Grand Chateau is what they call that one. Brand number 25 is Delta Hotels. This is Marriott's uh, newest upscale full-service brand. It's pretty new in the program, uh, so I haven't stayed at any of these yet, uh, but uh, it looks like they have a pretty similar design to um, almost the standard uh, Marriott hotels. Fairly new brand in the Marriott umbrella uh, is Gaylord Hotels. Just a few locations of these. There are five Gaylord Hotels, and they've got one in the pipeline. Gaylord Hotels uh, started with one location in Nashville, Tennessee, Gaylord Opryville. They are focused on conventions. They have really big convention space, entertainment in the hotels, lifestyle experiences, really trying to make it a family-friendly hotel, the kind of hotel that there might be convention, somebody goes to the convention, and then they bring their family with them to stay at the hotel so that the family can have a good time in the pool, those sorts of things, while the other person is at the convention. Uh, their locations are in Nashville, Dallas, Denver, Washington, D.C., and Orlando, and then they all get names. There's the Gaylord Opryland, there's this one, the Gaylord Palms, Gaylord Rockies, Gaylord Texan, and Gaylord National, which is in the National Harbor right outside of Washington, D.C. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> all right, so number 27 is another small brand, Bulgari Hotels, six locations of Bulgari, four in the pipeline. This is the one in London. I want to point out that there's not one doorman in that picture, but there's two, so high-end. Uh, they're going for um, dramatic Italian contemporary architecture, less than 100 rooms each. Their other locations are in Milan, Bali, London, Beijing, Dubai, and Shanghai. Um, and uh, a lot of comments about Delta Hotels. They're taking over old Marriott's. Uh, so saying one by Disneyland is great. It's renovated. Thanks for that report. Um, James says, I really enjoyed it in Charlottetown. Uh, and Points Traveler says they're taking over the old uh, Marriott's. And Cal says the one in Dallas is beautiful. Uh, I've not stayed at that one. I was going to go to a conference there, but then, uh, you know, COVID, it got canceled through this whole thing. Uh, so I hope to get out of those eventually. Point Traveler points out that you can't use your Bonvoy points at Bulgari. Yeah, there's a few of these newer brands that are like, what are points? Unless you're paying us. We are not interested in your business. Uh, Jenny Fied joining in the live stream. Hey, Jenny Fied, welcome to the stream. Brand number 28 is Addition, another new brand to the chain. Addition has 13 locations, 16 in the pipeline. They are balancing luxury and lifestyles. Addition uh, marries innovative design with vibrant food, beverage, and entertainment options. Edition has been named by Forbes as the world's hottest hotel brand, uh, and their goal is to provide uncomplicated, anticipatory luxury service. The rooms at Edition hotels are at least 400 square feet, so big, uh, and have a minimum of 15% of the room as suites, true suites, not just big areas, but true suites, and that the sleeping areas are divided from the living areas and their goal with addition hotels is to have bars and nightlife that become true destinations. I said earlier, I'll say it again, the more expensive the hotel is, the smaller their sign gets. Uh, this is the entrance to the one uh, in New York City. The one in West Hollywood that we seem to drive by all the time is also another one that just a little tiny sign. Look at the little tiny addition sign right there. Uh, Ribo says addition uh, is my favorite line. Points Traveler says addition in Tokyo is on my uh, wish list. Uh, and then Wu Tai says it looks like New Japan. This does look a bit like a Japanese vibe to it. Number 29, we're in the 
collections section. There's a few brands that are collections or portfolios. The autograph collection has 244 locations, 85 in the pipeline. This was a Marriott collection as part of Marriott that came into the merger. Uh, autograph collection brings hotels that have a lot of different backgrounds and designs under the Marriott umbrella so they can be affiliated with Marriott uh, and provide elite services, elite benefits, wide range of hotels in the autograph collection. There's another one like Renaissance. You really gotta do your homework to figure out what you're getting into. But we've actually stayed at some really nice autograph collections um, because they don't, their, their standards of what a room looks like or their standards of what a hotel looks like basically don't exist in autograph collection, which doesn't mean bad, um, but it means they don't, they don't all look the same. Uh, so this, for example, is the check-in area at the Autograph Collection Hotel Paradox in Santa Cruz, California. If you'll notice, that check-in desk is a, it's a redwood tree right there. You check in at a redwood tree because the redwoods are all around Santa Cruz, which is kind of a neat check-in desk. Um, this is the room at the Autograph Collection in Seoul, South Korea at the Rise Hotel, spelled with a Y, R-Y-S-E in, um... Hong Day. This is the breakfast at that hotel, which is a really neat breakfast buffet. Um, I had a really good Eggs Benedict. Chris, do you seriously get Eggs Benedict at a hotel in Seoul? I seriously get Eggs Benedict at a hotel in Seoul, and it was really good. Uh, OC Girl got the Korean noodles, which was maybe a little bit more typical, but both of them were really quite delicious. And another autograph collection we really enjoyed is this one in Granada, Spain. This is the Hotel Palacio de Santa Paula. It is a former monastery. That's right, it's a monastery turned into a hotel, but you would never see that with a Marriott or JW Marriott or any of those other things on it because it's just too weird. It doesn't fit in with the brand guidelines, but on the autograph collection, it is all good. Uh, Jenny Fied says that Redwood, uh, Jenny Fied says that Redwood Tree Desk is beautiful. Yeah, it was a pretty neat check in area. Kathy loves Eggs Benedict too. Eggs Benedict is like my go to breakfast at hotels. If they've got that on the menu, I'm going to order it at least once. Um, and uh, Geoman says, I need to go back to Santa Cruz. That's how he found me. All right, very cool, Geoman. Janelle says, if someone asked me how many brands are under Marriott, I would have guessed seven. Now you know the answer. It is 32. Yeah, that's right. Um, Kevin also says, I didn't realize how many brands. It has gotten kind of crazy. So has Brandon. So many new brands, so many new brands, which is why I had to do this video, just to keep them all straight. Number 30 is another collection. This is the Luxury Collection. This one came in from the Sheraton part of the merger. The Luxury Collection has 119 locations with 19 in the pipeline. It is Starwood's answer to the Autograph Collection. Um, they call it a curated collection, a curated ensemble of the world's iconic hotels that truly define their destination. If you look at this picture, this castle, where in the world do you think this castle is? It's in China. Would you think that castle was in China? That castle is in China. All right. Number 31, uh, the two new um, kind of collections that have come in here just super recently, Design Hotels and the Tribute Portfolio. Uh, these are like so new. I haven't had a chance to stay in these yet. Um, but uh, Tribute Portfolio for colorful and quirky, much like the travelers who choose to stay in them. All right. Well, that is everything you need to know about Marriott Hotels and all 32 of the brands, which means what time is it? Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. It is Q&A time. If you got a question and you asked it before and I didn't answer it, ask it again, put a question mark at the end of it so I make sure I know it's a question. And of course, as within every live stream, we'll be doing a giveaway too before we wrap up. Uh, Point Traveler really likes the Royal Hawaiian in Waikiki of the Luxury Collection. That is a really nice hotel. I like the Royal Hawaiian, even though it's pink, which is a weird color, but it's a super cool hotel. Careful Consumer says, uh, best review of hotels I've ever seen. Thank you, kudos. Oh, thank you, Careful Consumer. By the way, if you've been wondering what are the differences between Hyatt Hotels and you haven't checked out my video that uh, basically is the same complete guide to Hyatt Hotels, you'll find a link to that in the description. Um, maybe I'll put a card up here. Uh, and uh, I've got Hilton coming up in the pipeline. I don't know if I'll do that one yet, but these take a lot of work to put together, as you could imagine. How many slides were there, Chris? This was uh, like 
70 some pictures that you saw and uh, how many pages of notes do I have here? Seven pages of notes to go through about all these hotels. Uh, Michael says, what's your favorite brand? JW Marriott is my favorite brand. Um, and uh, Hotel Productions, uh, I don't know, still wants me to give him away a, a Sony ZV-1. I don't think I was ever giving away a Sony ZV-1. Um, James says, what's the best Bonvoy hotels for free night redemptions? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say Spring Hill Suites because I find the tier category on them is usually the lowest, so you can get a pretty good value on points redemptions at Spring Hills and Residence Inns. Um, Kathy says, I should have stayed at a Marriott or Hilton. She was a bit uh, disappointed in her accommodation in Waikiki. I'm sorry to hear that. Brandon says, hey, Chris, are you doing a 250K subscriber special or skipping that for 300K? I don't know. It depends what mood I'm in when I get to 5,000 more, but I'll probably do something at least. It seems like a good number. Jay wants to know if I'm planning to return to Thailand. We'd like to go back. We don't have any media plans, but that doesn't mean we're not going anywhere. Uh, Martin says, thoughts on the Marriott soap shampoo line? Yeah, I, I like them at JW Marriott's better. I feel like they have the same soaps, and I don't know, maybe I don't... Uh, soaps aren't that amazing at at least a lot of the, like, the low-end Marriott hotels. They're okay, um, but, uh, you know, my favorite soaps hotels, uh, I really like, uh, Le Labo. Le Labo's pretty, like, when I get Le Labo soaps, I'm like, all right, uh, and then Aromatherapy, which are often found at JW Marriott's. Uh, Keely says, which, uh, Marriott credit card do you recommend? I have, like, three Marriott credit cards, if you can believe that, because, you know, I get the free night every year for, like, the $95 annual fee on most of them, and, uh, so I'm probably not the best person to ask about which one I recommend since I have all three. Um... Kevin says, what's your top criteria for hotel selection? Location, rating, free breakfast? Um, yeah, all those, really. Uh, I mean, I probably look at location as number one. I want to be in a good location. Uh, I like quiet rooms. I like roomy rooms that I got enough space to put my luggage out. I like good bathrooms that have good water pressure and enough room to spread out in. Um, and I like, a, I like a good breakfast, ideally free. I mean, I'm a titanium in the Marriott thing so I get free breakfast in a lot of these chains and yes that does uh, make a difference I also really like the concierge lounges because uh, in some place like when we stayed at the Marriott in Zurich you know we'd come back to the lounge every night at seven o'clock and get all of our evening snacks and drinks and soda Zurich's an expensive country and so our evening stop into the lounge was probably forty dollars of food each of us every night so you figure 80 bucks of value in the evening breakfast could easily cost you 30 bucks a person so just having that lounge access is like you know 150 bucks a day or something like that um tracy asks if i cover the new free breakfast that's going on across the brand i am not impressed by that either uh but no i didn't cover that uh because they Really? So if we get into this for a moment about Marriott, uh, I guess because of the pandemic, you know, hotels have been telling Marriott corporate that we need to, uh, we need to save money on things. We can't make breakfasts that are as good. We can't provide the same service we used to. And so a lot have been going down in what I would call them the mid-tier hotels that just weren't that great anyway. The hotels that were great, provided great breakfast, they still do because they still know that that's what's um, their like market differentiator. But the uh, like the Marriott in Vail, Colorado, uh, now as part of their free breakfast benefit, is like, well, it has a continental breakfast, so we're going to give you the breakfast. But if you want orange juice or coffee, it's going to cost you more because a Marriott corporate doesn't tell us we need to give you those. Oh. Uh. I guess the Vail, Colorado uh, figures people are going to stay there anyway, whether or not they have a good breakfast benefit or not. But I think that's all pretty lame, which is why, as far as rewards programs are concerned, I prefer the Hyatt Rewards and Elite program to Marriott because uh, the benefits are better, the breakfast is better. But I stay at Marriott's more than I stay at Hyatt's because they're everywhere. So you can easily stay at Marriott's where there are not as many Hyatt's. Martin asks if Marriott's comps your parking and resort fees on redemptions like Hyatt. The answer is no. <laughs> they actually like changed their terms recently. They called them free night awards. Now it's not like free night award because they're like, um, you know, it's like free night award asterisk. Free nights may include resort fees or something like that. Um, 
Grant says, uh, what other brands are you considering doing complete guides for? The other one I have in my roadmap is Hilton, uh, but if you want me to do more, let me know and let me know what. I uh, I heard Martin say he wanted a full guide on Travel Lodge Hotel, so maybe I need to put that on the list too. Ha ha ha. Danielle says, the Autograph Collection Hotel in Granada looks so pretty. It may be on my list in the future. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, it is giveaway time. Uh, and if you want to win this Yellow Productions Crew shirt, well, maybe not maybe not this Yellow Productions Crew shirt, but if you want to win a Yellow Productions Crew shirt in your size, you got to answer my question. And my question to you is... What is my favorite brand in Marriott Hotels? If you can answer that question, I will ship this to you anywhere in the world. While we're waiting for those answers to come in, what do you do if you don't win and you want a shirt? Well, you can head over to the Yellow Productions shop, shop.yellow-productions.com. You can pick up one of your own. And if you wonder, hey, Chris, when is the next live stream? Let me tell you, it's not going to be next week. I'm sorry, no live stream next week. Next live stream likely in a couple weeks, but if you want to know when it's going to be, head over here and subscribe to the Yellow Productions update mailing list. I'll send you an email with the topic and the time, always a couple days before we do the live stream, so you know when to tune in. <laughs> so, uh, it is pretty funny. Yes, it's the time. And now we have a winner, winner chicken dinner. James... Just checking, James, congratulations, you are the winner. The answer is JW Marriott is my favorite uh, brand under the Marriott umbrella. So James, send me an email to, right there on the screen, chris at yellow-productions.com. Let me know your address, let me know the size of the shirt you want, and I will get it heading right over to you. What was funny is I saw a lot of people that said 32, they clearly had the answer queued up. Chris, you're gonna ask, how many brands are there in the umbrella? I love it that people are trying to anticipate the questions. Wu Tai says, Chris, you should write a book and publish it. What should I write a book about? I don't know. I'm a talker. I'm a talker more than a writer. I'm a drinker, too. Not of alcohol, but of interesting drinks. The Genki drink here. Well, again, fellow explorers, if you like this one and you want to know about Hyatt's, watch that video. I'll put the link right here. If you're watching the archive, you'll also find the description. If you're watching the live stream, let me know which other ones these you want me to do if you want to see other guides. And fellow explorers, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you 